Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing my five reasons on why I invest in silver and why it may be a good opportunity and idea for you to do the same in 2021. Just to remind you, I'm not a financial advisor. You should always do your own research before investing in anything. Also, if you find a value in today's video, please hit the like button and share it with a friend. Also, if you enjoy our content, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. That way YouTube can let you know every time we release new content. So other than that, guys, let's dive right on into it. Number one, it's a real physical asset. I can feel it. I can touch it. I can move it. Okay. Silver and gold are real money, guys. It's not fiat currency. It's not fake. It's not uh, doesn't have to be the ability basically to be created out of thin air, such as the, the dollar and digital currency, kind of like what Jerome Powell's been doing for the past year with his money printer, right? And I'm not talking about ETFs when investing in silver and gold, which you still you can invest in ETFs, but it's digital. It's not real. You can't feel it. You can't touch it. And also, uh, God forbid, someone decide to try and steal your digital currency or that some something happens that um, everything just gets wiped off the grid, you know, online, you're not out of everything that you, you know, you've invested in, right? You can store this somewhere and, you know, secure it safe. And if something happens uh, where you need it, you know exactly where to go to to grab that piece of silver. Number two, it protects you during a collapse of a currency. So basically, if the U.S. dollar collapses, then you have protection as you hold physical assets such as silver. So if you've been keeping up with the dollar the past year, you've seen it's on a steady decline. And guys, there's a reason that these banks hold physical silver in anticipation and protection of that dollar can potentially collapse, right? Uh, JP Morgan Chase has, I believe, the, the largest amount of silver uh, stored in, you know, anticipation and, you know, just protection in case the U.S. dollar does collapse okay and historically all fiat currencies eventually do collapse there's a lot of talk that the US dollar is going to do the same we don't know if it's going to happen this year or even in our lifetime but they're talking that you know eventually it's going to happen and basically guys as the dollar decreases the value of silver will most likely increase okay and I'll give you an example of that uh, below but it's also a good hedge against inflation as I was saying as you know the dollar is going to decrease silver will increase so inflation is another thing that's been a hot topic uh, with the talk about raising taxes and raising minimum wage these business owners are going to have to find a way to you know keep their business afloat and with taxes increasing then what's going to happen now and even with the minimum wage thing is they're going to have to raise the prices of goods and services you know to basically maintain their the quality of their business and their quality of life, which means, you know, that gallon of milk, those carton of eggs, uh, whatever you're going to buy now, it's going to be, you know, the price is going to be more than what it is now, you know, based on what they have to adjust based on uh, the taxes and the increase in their cost to run their business. So let me give you an example of how the U.S. dollar and, and silver kind of counteract with each other. So in 2011, the value of the dollar was about 74, and silver was at an all-time high of 48 dollars and 28 cents. Two and a half years prior, it was only nine dollars an ounce. So if you'd have invested in silver at nine dollars an ounce, then you could have made quite a bit of good um, a good return on your investment at selling at the peak of 28 uh, 48.28. Okay. Which brings me to number three, sell the spikes for profit. So that's the whole name of the game, right? You're trying to increase the value of um, of your wealth. And if you do have a large spike in your investment, then it's always okay to take some profit off of the table, uh, maybe even all the profits off the table if it makes sense for you. But in that situation that we talked about on slide two, you could have taken uh, a lot or almost all of your profits off the table. And then once the silver market corrected and got down lower, you could have used that to buy more silver. Number four, the silver to gold ratio. This is probably my favorite slide on the entire presentation. So silver to gold ratio is determined on the spot price between each of uh, both silver and gold. And when I say spot price, it means the particular price per ounce 
for each of these at a particular time. Okay, it changes and fluctuates uh, throughout the day, every single day. And the way that you determine the ratio is you divide the spot price of the of gold by the spot price of silver. Okay, the larger the ratio between gold and silver, the better the buying opportunity for your silver investment. And I'll give you an example of why in a second. Uh, once the ratio begins to get lower, it's going to create a good buying opportunity for you to buy gold with some of your silver investment. Okay, so let's talk about a little example on how that can happen and why it's a, a good deal for you. So let's say you buy uh, silver and the ratio is like really, really big. So let's say the ratio is 124 to 1. That would mean that the the gold spot price is a lot more than the silver spot price. You know, the silver is you know, usually relatively cheaper than gold, which is another reason I like to buy it. So let's say it's 124 to 1. That means for every 124 ounces of silver, I can buy one ounce of gold. Okay. So let's say I did that. Let's say I went and I invested money into silver. I have 124 ounces total. All right. Um, and the ratio is really, really large at this time. So basically, if I wanted to buy one ounce of gold, I would need to give away all of my silver, which then leaves me with one ounce of gold. And I'm like, okay, now what? Now I have to wait and save money to go buy more silver or buy more gold. So let me tell you why it's better to wait until that ratio gets uh, a little bit lower. Okay. Let's say the ratio decreases and the ratio is now 70 to one. So for every 70 ounces of silver, I can buy one ounce of gold. So now what I can do is I can now buy one ounce of gold out of my 124 ounces, but now I still have some silver left over in my portfolio. Okay, if you can see. So it's always better to wait, and if you're going to exchange those out, wait till that ratio is starting to kind of get lower and closer down together. That way you don't have to give everything up for one ounce. And number five, the industrial demand for silver, guys, it's it's very useful. They they need the they need silver to make things, okay? And this is you know a, a big reason for that. So it's not just like a useless investment, right? So silver is used in items such as solar panels, uh, batteries, medicine, semiconductors, photography, all kind of different things. And another reason for 2021, you know, with solar and EVs being on you know the uh, the big list of um, the Biden administration and moving forward, then it's smart to own silver to diversify your portfolio because the value of this should go up as the demand for these type of products do increase. Okay, so where do I buy silver? So the, the one thing I recommend is find a local supplier in your town, right? See if there's any uh, type of, um, you know, business that actually will just sell it outright to you and you can walk in, you know, buy one ounce, buy two ounces, however many ounces you want. And that's always your, your best, in my opinion, your best bet. Go, to, you know, try to stay local with that and uh, pay cash if possible because they're going to charge a fee if you're going to do, you know, credit cards because they're going to actually get charged a processing fee as well. So it's always cheaper, actually, if you can just find out what the spot price is and say, hey, how much is it going to cost me to buy 10 ounces of silver? They'll tell you go to the ATM or go to your bank, get the cash out, go exchange it and save you some money that way. It might not be an insane amount of money you're saving, but over the long term, if you're buying silver every month, you might save a couple hundred dollars to a couple thousand dollars in that year, depending on the amount that you're buying. So if you're not, um, you know, if you don't have a local supplier, you, you want to just buy it online, moneymetals.com, you can go make an account or you can just buy it as a guest and you can purchase silver there as well. So that's uh, that's the two things that I do recommend um, on if you're going to buy silver. So check the website out if you don't actually feel comfortable walking in uh, to go purchase silver. That's all I have for today, guys. I want to thank you for watching. I hope that this uh, video gave you a little bit of insight on why I invest in silver and maybe kind of give you some, um, you know, something to think about on maybe you should start investing as well and diversify your portfolio. So again, if you found value today in the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell and comment below on if you plan on investing in silver and if you have any other uh, topics that you'd like me to cover. So other than that, guys, we'll catch you in the next video.